congratulations. A uh, great way to start the uh, the golf season with this movie. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us. And before we, we get started, uh, again, um, Julio, I think we I think we know who you are. <laughs> but uh, can we go around uh, around the room and just uh, introduce uh, introduce yourself with your name and the character you play, uh, and that way that way we'll have we'll have the recording for that. Okay, guys. So okay. who wants to start? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. I'm, I'm Gregory Diaz the fourth, and I play Gene Vasquez. Woo! Yay! Yay. Next. <laughs> Miguel. Oh, hey, I'm Miguel Angel Garcia, and I play Felipe. Very good. Yay. And next. My name I'm is Jose Christian Gallegos. Gallegos. Oh, yeah, you can go. You can go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I'm Jose Julian. I play Lupe. Okay. And I'm Christian Gallegos, and I play Mario Lomas. Uh, let's start. Let's start with uh, the time period itself. Uh, again, Julio, um, how did you uh, get these these guys into the time period and what it was like uh, in the fifties and the racism in the fifties? Did you have to do a lot of a, a lot of teaching for that? Uh, well, as far as I I don't know if I prepped you guys at all. I think I just like when I put them in wardrobe and surrounded them with uh, you know fifties cars, fifties uh, furniture. They seemed to sort just sort of come alive. I mean, I think I I operate under the assumption that teenagers in the 50s aren't that different from teenagers today um so you throw challenges at them and i and i wrote them and and assumed that they would react uh in ways that we would you know i, I would have when i was in high school and that was sort of our my operating principle for for realism i think you know christian you've been obsessed with the 50s forever right like that's oh man for me it wasn't difficult i i manifested this uh 10 years ago so when i when i stepped on when i stepped on set and saw the wardrobe and saw everybody in, in character to me it was just surreal i i wish i could just stay in, in that era you know just live without without the racism now <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah i think um julio and the rest of the crews did a really great job at encapsulating the essence of the 50s um and i think they also just did a really great job at finding locations that they really didn't have to alter that much. They were, it, it was kind of weird, like especially while, while we were filming out in Colombia, there was a scene that takes place in Mexico and it was, we got there, it was super late at night, but it was just like, I was just so much, it, it was just, it was really easy to get lost in it. Um, and I'm sure you can definitely see that on the screen. So it really gave you the atmosphere or whatever you felt so that you could play your character? Yeah. I also think that, you know, um, we all come from like immigrant backgrounds. So hearing the stories of whether that be our parents, grandparents, or, or further, you know, is something that influences, influences us a lot. And, and Umberto Garcia's book, Mustang Miracle, too, I think was a great starting point for us to know about the true story of these boys and what they went through and, and the challenges they faced. And then the rest of it is is acting. <laughs> Did awesome. it's hard to beat that first impression when the first day on set when you see everyone in costume and all the props and everything. I mean, down to the the scorecards and even like the scoreboard itself, you know, was taken off of like the fonts of it and and you know the 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 way it was constructed, you know, replicated the '50s era. So there, I mean, I, nothing really beats on these like period films that first initial impression when you get on set. You're like, whoa! Like there really is a suspension of disbelief for a few minutes when you see everyone, you know, together dressed in that attire. And I mean, like even the golf carts. The golf carts were period golf carts. You know, they were these like old, you know, ice cream wagon looking things. And you see these and it's it's very easy to get lost in that world and have fun running around the course in that right oh, oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah the, the clubs too i mean the clubs were period i mean they yeah. they were all made out of wood and and they were some, some were were really well preserved so i mean it, that was one of the advantages of this film that we got to learn on 1950s equipment on top of it like we didn't i mean i didn't know how much uh golf technology had come since that point so learning with that with that equipment was crazy are, are any of you golfers? No, uh, I'm not. Defining golfers. <laughs> I, think, I, think, 
I think not ready I, for the PGA, that's for sure. I, I, definitely not ready for the PGAs, but I think I can speak for a lot of us when I say um, I think picking up golf for this film, of course, not only needing to, but I think it just became so much fun to us. Um, yeah. for me at least. And like, you know, like uh, Jose was mentioning, we're just, we got to learn on period clubs. So then you go and play 18 holes after a long day of filming and you have this huge carbon fiber driver, like the size of your head. And it's just a lot easier to hit the ball and the ball goes a lot further and that feels good, you know? So, I mean, on our last day of filming, we, the, the, the first thought was like, let's, let's go play a couple holes, which some of us did. And we often did a lot in Texas. <laughs> um, fortunately enough, there was uh, a course in the resort that we were staying at. So, I mean, for me, at least golf uh, has, has kind of become a part of my life somehow in a way that I did not expect, but I'm, I'm definitely grateful for. Are you golf left-handed? <laughs> oh, that's a really great question. Um, Wait, do you golf left-handed? <laughs> I I personally don't. Um, but wow, I actually forgot about that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but Gene does. He he had to learn how to golf with right-handed clubs, but he swung left. So I think you can imagine just like a driver, you're using the the butt of it not the open face you're using the the, the rounded end um but throughout the film though he does eventually learn how to swing on his right because hey know. julio uh the look of the film uh really is is unique for for golf golf is a slow measured game and you get into a to a pattern but you really bring golf to life in this with the editing and and the quick cuts uh, and, and making golf an action sport. Uh, is that something you really wanted, you had in mind uh, for, for the audience to make sure that the, the audience stayed engaged by making this uh, an action picture, not just a golf picture? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that was definitely one of the challenges when, we, when I first started conceiving of how to shoot this, because unlike other sports, I mean, I, had done a, I did a fishing movie the last time, and it's easy to shoot the people on a boat. I, if you shoot a basketball movie, it, everybody's in a very small uh, area. But the problem with golf is you hit, the person hits the ball and then the result is 100, 200, 300 yards away. And so trying to figure out how to make that stuff seem compelling was was a, was a technical challenge. But also I, I we try to design all the golf montages in a way that reflect the characters and where they're at at any given moment. So um, the first time they go to their tournament, we shoot on tripods, very stable. Is it, the camera works boring? The music is low energy. It's because they haven't found the rhythm. And over the course of the movie, you know, each montage gets successively more uh, higher energy um, until but they're perfectly in sync by the end, and and their the camera's moving as as high energy as they they're feeling. And so, uh, so it was definitely a very specific choice to try to make sure that the golf doesn't feel boring and repetitive. Yeah, it really it does move, and and, and uh, a lot of that is in the editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Have you experienced some of those same, um, some of that same racism, some of that that same blind ignorance in your own life that you brought to this film? I have. I I grew up uh, playing soccer, and we played with uh, against a bunch of, uh, I guess, wealthy teams. We didn't have the the best cleats, the best equipment, or the best coaches either. And every now and then, um, because it's, a, it's sort of a close contact sport, they would they would whisper at you race racist remarks. You know, they they say a lot of racist things, and you would kind of feel that if you were to defend yourself, even though you're protecting yourself or defending yourself, you end up losing to them. And it just felt very unfair. And it wasn't much we could say or much we could do, but just play the game. And by getting our revenge is by winning. You know, by being good. And that's what it was for me. Yeah. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah, I, I honestly I, I can't point out um right now a specific moment where I had a racist encounter, but I do think that's something that um I deal with and a lot of immigrants deal with is just the the conversation of identity. You know, I was I was born and raised in New York. Um but sometimes, you know, when I say I'm, I'm an American, people are like, yeah, but from where, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, 
it's a thing of identity sometimes that we deal with, but I'm really proud of, of my identity. Um, being an American, but also having immigrant parents. Um, and I think that's something that these boys felt as well, you know, even in the 50, in the 50s, they felt like they grew up in this place and that they were American, uh, but their parents didn't speak English. So I think that's something that immigrants deal with is that more than, more than anything, um, than any specific encounter that I can think about. It's the conversation of identity, really. Yeah, the the scene of going across the river in, into Mexico was, yeah, was, was very example. telling. Was very telling because yeah. that's where you found out that you betwixt and between, and yeah. you know, yeah. that, yeah. that, that you were American. You feel accepted in on this side of the river. You weren't accepted on the other side of the river yeah. either. Well, you know, they have, <laughs> I I think I remember reading a book once that put it kind of distilled the feeling of kind of of being a you know minority in the United States, uh, because and in the home country that you originate from, typically you're not really welcome with open arms and not, not exactly that. It's just that, you know, you are, there, there is a difference, you know, cause your, your, your culture is different. And, uh, I heard it described as having a foot in both worlds, but a place in, in neither, you know, so. But we've clearly come a long way. <clears throat> We're all, uh, you know, Latino kids and, and we've made a movie. So yeah. We've really come a long way and, you know, we've had this opportunity to make this movie and tell this story. So that's, that's progress in itself for sure. And influence others by having them see it. That's correct. How much did uh, you guys know about uh, Dennis Quaid and JB and, and Cheech uh, before, before you uh, were on a set with these guys? Uh, you know, such a joy to work with these people and, and, you know, you grow up seeing them and, uh, and it's crazy because they're just human, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's really great to be working with them. And obviously, Cheech is honestly my favorite part of the movie. I think he's incredible. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always great to learn from those people uh, who have been in the industry for so long. Was there any negotiation? Did you have to talk anybody into this or did they see this story and say, yeah, I'm in? Cheech, Cheech was actually a last minute uh, get. We were... We, were, we had been targeting some other actors and we thought we had some other people and then it fell through right like two days before we were supposed to shoot those scenes. And Cheech, we sent him the script. By the end of the day, he had said yes. And he was uh, he was there, I think, either the day or two days later, he was he was on set with us. And I don't think he realized he was signing up to be in a cage suit the whole time. I mean, <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was in the script, but I maybe he didn't quite, uh, he didn't catch that part because uh, it was 105 degrees outside and he's just walking around in a cage for three days. <laughs> Uh, but he was, a, he, was a, he was a good sport about it. Yeah, it was a, we, 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 I put the boys through much worse stuff than that, so he was all right. Well, guys, uh, thank you all so so very much. It's a, it's a delight to uh, to meet you all. Uh, congratulations! Uh, it's a great ensemble. So uh, we uh, we wish you all much success and thank thanks you. for being with us. Thank you very much. Well, Linda, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.